Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of A Million Dollar Monday, the day of the week when we review the high stakes tournaments from this past Sunday at America's Cardroom. Today, we are going to be reviewing Million Dollar Sunday, a special edition with a $265 buy in, which attracted 4,848 players for a total prize pool of $1.212 million. We've got a fun lineup of players here that we're going to get to know in just a minute. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the payouts for this final table. Eighth place taking home $15,756. Seventh place taking home $27,876. Sixth place, $39,996. We got fifth place taking home $52,116. Fourth, $72,962.40. Third, is so when we get into that six-figure territory, can be taken home. $103,989.60. Second place, $141,561.60. And first place, the winner of this tournament, going to be taken home almost $200,000, $192,102. Both players here having the old nothing burger. Camphor with queen high has the best of it. No wide anything with the seven high. Sitting at a low point in the range. Will he decide to bluff with his hand? Or will he decide to just check it down? He did get a free flop. His opponent has shown no interest. He is going to make that bet. Now the question is, will Kanfu make the call with Queen High? Got the nut no pair. His opponent doesn't have an ace, king, eight, or a jack. Queen High is good. But he decides to not make the call. And it's a good play from no wide anything here. Taking the bottom of the range. Hand that's definitely not going to win a showdown. Decided to make a bluff with it. Those are often the hands you're going to be most inclined to bluff with. It's the hands that definitely can't win at showdown. But that should be a secondary consideration. Primary consideration is, does my opponent look like they have much of anything? If my opponent looks like they have a whole lot of something, it's not really a good time to be running a bluff, right? We're not trying to bluff our opponents off uh, two pairs and trips and full houses and things like that. We're looking to bluff our opponents off of small pairs, high card hands, things of that nature. And all right, we should see action here. For 10 big blinds, no wide anything. Very likely to just move all in here. And Willie with the hand as strong as nines. I don't see any way he could fold this this good of a hand. Uh, no wide anything. We've seen how wide he's opening, and he's certainly going to be moving all in with any pair. So it's a snap call for nines. And if no king or queen comes, Willie's going to find the double up here, getting up to 60 million and getting himself out of that short stack prison that he was in. So interesting here, Re Broccoli going with the small size, inviting his opponents to shove over the top. Unlucky Duck can reshove. Um, it does give Kamfu a good price to call and defend, but it also gives Unlucky Duck a chance to put it in with more hands than they would versus uh, the shove. Kamfu flopping a gut shot here. Not a whole lot of flop, but does decide to go for the check raise, putting Re Broccoli to the test. What do you think, Chad? If you're in Re Broccoli's shoes, do you just call or do you put it all in? A lot you need to protect against here, those diamonds. Do you have top pair, top kicker? I feel like it's probably just a shove spot, and if your opponent has a flush or two pair, that's just really unlucky. Yeah, we got the shove. Camp was definitely not gonna be calling here with a uh, gut shot. And a nice hand there for Re Broccoli. This will be interesting. Unlucky ducky, close hand. Don't think it's quite good enough with Marco having four bigs. Canfu with definitely a strong enough hand to open. No wide anything, a great candidate for three betting. Flatting works too, uh, but with him having the chip lead over second place, I think we're more likely. Okay. I thought we were more likely to see a three bet there, but instead we are going to see a three-way flop. A top air top kicker for Canfu. A get shot for Willie and two overcards for no wide anything. This looks like a good spot for Camfu to throw a bigger bet out there. A lot of draws to protect against. A lot of overcards to protect against. Spades. He's going to go for the small size, giving Willie decent price on the gut shot, but in a three way situation, not sure that we're going to see a call. Oh, we do. Camfu doing a good job there, knocking no wide anything out on the flop. He would be second best at this point instead. Holding the best of it and going to be taking it down with a bet. We're on the verge of losing our first player. Marco Van Basten is going to be all in here for 11 and a half million chips with King Jack. And we know, we know that Willie is going to be saying, yes, I would like to also play 
for 11 million ships. So we are going to have a confrontation. If Willie maintains the best hand through to the river, which means once all the five cards are on the table, if Willie still has the best hand, we're going to get a knockout and we're going to be down to the final seven. If Marco can come from behind by either hidden Jack, a King, making some kind of straight or a flush. If he gets another diamond or a 10, boom, he's going to double up and he's going to stay in the game. So Willie went for the knockout there, was unsuccessful. Marco found the double up that he needed. And now things are interesting because we have three short stacks with about 10 big blinds each. Now they're all going to be wanting to wait each other out because look, from going from eighth to seventh, $12,000 difference. Going from eighth to sixth, $24,000 difference, 2.6x the payout, and oh my goodness, pocket aces in the big blind for Eagle. Unfortunately for him, no one has too much, but this guy here, no white anything, he likes to just play tons of hands. He's got a big stack. He likes to play really loose. He likes to use his 100 mil. So Eagle's going to get some action. The question is, how should we play it? Should we just call and give no white anything a chance to bet the flop, uh, maybe make a pair? I think the answer is yes. Because if Eagle re-raises here, if he raises him back, no white anything's going to fold all his bad hands like this and only continue with his good ones. Whereas if he just calls, no white anything's going to bluff after the flop. If he makes a pair, he's going to put in more chips. And um, aces is a really good hand. It's one of the hands that you can slow play in poker because you're 80% chance to win against a random two-card hand. And you want to give those two-card hands a chance to approve. He makes the three bet. No white anything now is going to have an easy fold. Uh, and just from what we've seen with how loose No White Anything's playing, how much junk he's going to have, um, I think I kind of would have liked to slow play. And oh, okay, we're going to see some action here. Willie has pocket nines. Generally, when you have 12 big blinds or less in a tournament, when you bet, you're going to be betting all in. Uh, Willie's got 10 big blinds here, so he's got a good enough hand to play. He's going to be going all in. And Eagle with a pair of kings, the second best hand in No Limit Texas Hold'em is certainly going to be making the call here. Which means Willie is going to be an 80-20 underdog. He's going to win this pot 20% of the time. He's going to win this pot one time out of five when a nine comes off or he makes a miracle straight. But uh, it's not looking very good for him here. And Willie is going to be our first elimination from this final table. He's going to be taken home. Willie is going to be taken home. $15,756. And everyone remaining is now guaranteed $27,876. Question was whether or not Kamfu should have played the eights. No. If there were no caller, eights can call for 10 big blinds. They don't love it, but they can. But once there is another caller ahead and he's now playing against two hands, no, eights is definitely folding. And all right, we're going to see some action. No white anything with queens. Unlucky Duck knows no white anything has been opening a ton of hands. So I wouldn't fault him if he decided to just move all in because we've seen how wide no white anything's going. The other option is to call. And if he catches, you know, a 10 or an ace, probably put the rest of the chips in. But I think shove makes sense. He does make the shove. Flops a gut shot. An ace, ace or queen would give him the win. Uh, anything else. We'll give him the loss. And queens are going to hold here for no wide anything. And unlucky duck going to be our sixth place finisher. Taking home 20 or our seventh place finisher. Taking home $27,876. And Marco did a great job laddering two spots. He thought he was only going to make 15K. Instead, he made 39000 And we might see him put it in with the ace deuce here. Yeah, he's got an ace. Runs an ace king. Re Broccoli is going to be moving all in to isolate. Kamfu will also probably be calling here with ace king. And this is an interesting spot now if you're Marco. Because if Re Broccoli gets knocked out by Kamfu, you can make an extra $13,000. You're basically saying I'm only going to make $13,000 marks. You have one big blind left, but could happen. I think since he's putting three quarters of his chips, though, it's hard to find that fold. If you put in half, he does, though. And this is why. And it's super disappointing when you see they both have ace king. But at the same time, he sees he would have been eliminated anyway. So he did give himself some extra life. But 
That's one of the reasons for putting most of your chips in rather than all of them is if you see a bunch of action go on behind you, we could potentially make tens of thousands of dollars by folding. Then you fold. Hope that one of the other players gets knocked out. Hope you make a bunch more money with a stack that had no business making any more. And uh, yeah, try, try again. Five's going to be all in. I wonder if Kampfu's going to call for one big blind here. <laughs> He's going to isolate. And it's 10 jack against fives. There's the straight on the turn for Kampfu. And Marco going to be going out in sixth place, taking home $39,996. <laughs> A great demonstration in how to ladder and how to turn a short stack that's supposed to make 15k into a still short stack that makes you 39,996. So all our remaining players guaranteed 50 grand, $52,116 to be exact. Our chip leader, still Kamfu, no wide anything, still one of the big stacks. These guys have been battling it out, maintaining. And uh, Eagle did a good job chipping up. Found the right spots and Re Broccoli Palmero did a great job maintaining and I'm moving the right through the payout structure. Now Palmero with Ace 10 suit here should be a shove. Don't think he's gonna get called here. And alright. No idea anything gonna be getting involved with Ace 9 suited. Eagle with a strong enough hand to play. <laughs> could play it either way, could three bet it, could just call. He's gonna take the more passive approach. Call. See if he can catch a piece of the flop before continuing. And this is not a piece. He does have two over cards. Um, which gives him a little incentive to stick around. Great flop for no wide anything flop in the nut flush draw. And an over card. He's going to bet on the turn and should be a takedown. We haven't seen Eagle fighting too hard for pots. Playing a bit more of a fit or fold strategy so far. And this could get interesting. Ace King for Eagle. Kamfu with a typical three betting candidate. Baby suited ace, ace two suited, ace three suited, ace four suited, ace five suited. A lot of these hands making it in the three betting range here. Could also flat take a flop. With the shorter stacks there, sometimes we see people get pretty extreme and just jam these hands. Feels like it's kind of a lot though. He is going to do the jam though, for risking the 30 bigs because they're just like, that's what the GTO says, man. It's the optimal thing. Just jam the hand, take my 30% of the time, works every time. I think if, you, if you're eagle, you hate it because there are these two short stacks here, but you got ace-king suited. Can't be folding. Let's see. We could be looking at a 200 million chip pot. And the reason you hate it is because a lot of the time, Kampfu's going to have a pair here, and you're going 50-50, which you don't want to do when outlasting two players would make you double the money, 50k. Uh, but because sometimes you're going to run into hands like this, ace two suited, ace three suited, ace four suited, ace five suited, maybe some ace queens, uh, hands just too strong. So it does make the call. He's got the best fit. Pretty good flop for... Oh my goodness, you got to be kidding me, man. You know what Eagle's saying right now is just a whole lot of... <laughs> could get back in it with an eight, a ten, or a king. But on that nine river, that's not going to cut it. And uh, Eagle 47 getting extremely unlucky there. Gonna be our fifth place finisher taking on $52,116. Although, you know, I think he was pretty excited to be getting something more to the tune of like 100k. Anyway, uh, Kampfu doing the damage. And uh, Paul Marrow and Re Broccoli are loving it, getting that $20,000 pay jump just from sitting on the sidelines. Uh, no wide anything getting that pay jump too. And sometimes lucky. Sometimes lucky. Would I ever find a fold there with Ace King? No, I don't think so. I don't think he can ever find a fold there. Maybe if the payouts were a hundred X and you're going from five million to seven million to ten million. Nah, I don't think so. I think you just I think you just got to accept the variance. If you sign up to play a poker tournament, you're signing up for a variance fest. All right, we're going to see Kampfu putting more pressure on no white anything now that he's got a significant chip lead on him. Two to one. That's one of the other perks of the play he did earlier. We'll talk about that after. Uh, 
Bets the flop with top pair. Still got the best fit. No idea anything has the flush draw on the flop. So he's going to be continuing. Now picks up a gut shot to go with his hand. Will be continuing again if faced with a bet. Uh, Kung Fu could bet large for protection here. Charging, you know, the gut shots that now have a pair with them. Or he could bet small to allow those hands to continue for the right price. But also allow his opponent to continue with a pair of eights, pair of tens, pair of fives. Things that he's beating. Uh, whereas if he goes for a really big bet size, he may narrow his opponent's range down to just better queens and whatnot. Um, so that's why the small bet makes sense. Now on this river, still got the best of it. He's going to go into a bluff catching mode. Checking, giving his opponent a chance to bluff with the missed flush draws. Maybe turn a 10 into a bluff. If no white anything picks the right sizing, maybe able to get a fold. I don't know. Mostly just afraid of that king. Not too many two pairs out there. A lot of missed, a lot of missed draws. Six sevens, club draws. Um, one got shot, got there, jack nine. The other two got shots, jack ten, ten, nine did not. Let's see if Camfu finds the call here. 21, 27 million into a pot of 86 mil. Does not, no white anything. Making a great sizing choice there. Takes that pot down on the river. No fear. Um, so yeah, what I was... Oh, we got, we got action here. We got action here. Palmero, I think ace 10 strong enough to just be shoving here. Especially if no had anything had folded. Easy shove for Palmero over camp who's open with a raise and a call. Uh, I think we're still probably going to see Palmero. Stick it in. He may be cautious. The fact that no white anything could be trapping. So it means more chips to win. If he gets a shove through, if he shoves, picking up 5.5, it's almost a 50% increase. Does go for it. Whereas if nines hadn't called, it'd be about a 33%. Nines will be calling here. They've set the trap. Now they're going to flip. And Paul Merrill hits the ace that he needed. Finds the double up. And now he's in second place. Just like that. So... What I was going to say uh, was that one of the perks of the play that Kamfu made with the ace-two suit is that when he does win that all-in, he has a massive chip lead on everyone else, and he can start applying a lot of pressure because the pay jumps are so significant. Um, people are going to want to outlast each other, and therefore Kamfu can make more use of the extra chips that he's acquired when he gets lucky with that ace deuce. Obviously, the main point of the play is using the ace blocker to try to get your opponent to fold. But uh, when called, it's 30% of the time you got all the chips. All right, Reed Broccoli, probably going to be shoving here off eight. Ace eight on the button. Eight big blinds. Definitely feel strong enough. And pocket kings in the small blind also definitely feels strong enough. And Ree Broccoli catching the card he needed. We're seeing uh, some good luck and good fortune on the final table for the second best hand here. Nice job by Ree Broccoli. <clears throat> Finding the shove there. No fear. And I can't feel going to be having a shove here with eights. Do believe. Oh, he decides to take a flop instead. Kind of surprised he didn't just shove it pre-flop there. I guess he wants to make sure that he maintains the chip lead. All right, I think the blinds are up now. 2.5 million, 5 million. It's going to be shallowing out our shorter stacks. No idea anything on 20. Re Broccoli, 17 and a half. Palmero on 23. And Camp Fu, our chip leader. 30 and change. Palmer here flopping a gut shot and a backdoor flush shot. Definitely enough to continue. And, oh, this is interesting. Both players picking up a flush draw. Okay, if we could take a free card here or keep betting. There are a lot of straight draws he can get value from. A lot of straight draws to protect against. Let's go for it. Now, if you're in Palmero's shoes, tough spot here. You have a lot of outs. 
if their hearts aren't dead, you're getting a good price. But out of position. Out of position. Hard to get paid if you hit. It may be a spot that because of those factors, Palmero may decide to semi-bluff with this one. Come up with a little check raise. He does. He's going to check raise all in. I don't see how Kamfu gets away with it, gets away from this. May not love it for fear of being up against two pair. Random set, although that's not that likely. Uh, he's smashing this hand, and against anything, he's got a bunch of outs. So I think Kamfu is probably going to find the call here, and Palmero just improved to too much of a hand to uh, get away from it, but felt he couldn't check call with this one out of position because it'd be hard to <clears throat> get paid off. So he used this really good quality semi-bluffing hand. Check raise all in. Unfortunately for him, his outs were mostly dead. Only had three jacks he could hit for the gut shot. And uh, now we are down to three-handed play. Palmero going to be our fourth place finisher, taking home $72,962.40. Everyone remaining guaranteed $100,000. So probably see Kamfu. Just continue to apply a bunch of pressure. Both of the shorter stacks wanting to make a deal, obviously. Um, <clears throat> get rid of all this ICM pressure that they're going to be facing. Because Kampfu with uh, two-thirds of the chips in play. And two evenly sized short stacks. It's in a great spot to just, yeah, exactly. It's going to go full gangster monkey. You got it. Are you making deals to chip daddy? I mean, Sure. I'm risk averse, so I would make the, I would make a deal. <laughs> All right, Ray Broccoli shoving eight point eight. I think Camp going to find the fold here with the, or the call here. Sorry, with Ace Four. Opportunity to take out Ray Broccoli, make forty G's, and as long as there's no Jack or Ten on the river, that's exactly what he's going to do. Ray Broccoli, our third place finisher, did a great job moving up the payout structure, locking himself up a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and now we're going to see a heads up match. Between Kamfu and No White Anything. The two players who came to the final table as the big stacks successfully worked their big stacks, used their big stacks effectively, and uh, now playing heads up for 50 grand. Both players guaranteed $141,561.40. First place can be taken on $192,102. Kamfu with a pretty big chip lead here. Three to one advantage. We're keeping in big lines here. Kung Fu, make it straight. Catching the best of it. You guys are great. All right, left from no wide. Can't not not letting him see any free flops. Smash and grab. And the blinds going up again. What are we at? Three million, six million. Kampu with a huge ship here. It's going to be pretty tough for no white anything to get back in this. At this point, 6 to 1 chip disadvantage. Kampu set up the limp shove with ace jack suited. Nicely laid trap. Going to pick up a bunch more chips with no showdown. All right, no white anything doing what he needs to do to stay in the game. Here we got a little something something for both players. It's mid pair for no white anything. Oh, this is tough. Facing a big bet. Ooh. 
Kamfu with the missed gut shot. No white anything with two pair. If Kamfu decides to keep betting with this one, No white will get the double up. But after calling a big bet on the turn, Kamfu may think that No white is usually calling a river bet as well. Not having a lot of hands that are calling the turn and folding the river there. So a good discipline to check back from Kamfu. Another two pair. And all right, it's another double gut shot. Interesting spot here. Double gut shot for Kamfu. He did a five or a nine. No white anything with a pair. That same gut shot to the five uh, and a flush draw. And all right, Kamfu Rivers. Straight. Very nice spot for him. Going to go for a value bet. The question is how much? Does he go small? Three to four. Does he go large? Does he go for it all? He does go for it all. And it's back on no wide anything who has nothing but the bottom pair. He's got a flush blocker with the seven of clubs and a straight blocker with seven of clubs. Need to think his opponent is on a mistrial to make that call. Kamfu went for it, didn't get it, was hoping his opponent had something more like top pair or two pair. And a good job there no, from no white anything by not overvaluing his blocker and getting himself into trouble. If Kamfu decides to go for the shove here for 13, this could be it. There's no way no white anything is going to be folding sixes for this many chips. So we're going to be seeing a 150 million chip pot. Kamfu needing a jack or a 10. Or an ace or a nine to complete the straight and have the best of it. He's currently a favorite on this flop. No white anything holding the best hand though with sixes. Turn ace. That's going to be the end of it. Kamfu turns Broadway. No white anything cannot catch a card. It's going to get him back in the game. It's going to be a GG. GG! And our champion on this week's edition of Million Dollar Monday. Going to be Kamfu94. Played a solid final table. Taking home 141,000. $192,102. Second place finisher is going to be no white anything. He's the one who's taken home $141,561. And this is our final results for the final table. Eighth place, Whitey Folds. Willie taking home 15 k Unlucky Duck in seventh, taking home 27 Marco, sixth, taking home 40 k Eagle, 47 Fifth for 52 Palmero. Fourth for 73,000. Re Broccoli, third, 100K. No White Anything, 141,000. And first place, Kamfu, our champion, taking on $192,102. Very well played final table by all players. Uh, great learning was had here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you got some knowledge from it. Um, if you want to check out more videos like this one, make sure to click this link for the playlist of all the America's Card and Final Table reviews. And, um, let me know what your biggest aha moment was in the comments of this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, you know what to do. Take what you learned. Go out there. Get stacked.